I'm a writer. That's okay. Really? Yeah, I can. Okay, hi, uh, I'm Craig Lord. Um, you're watching Swimming World TV, and uh, we're back here talking about the ISL. I've got Tina Andrew with me, and I've got Lenny Kraselberg with me. And I just want to say <laughs> that this image reflects what happens in mix zones all the time. I'm two foot three, and they're sitting down. <laughs> yeah, so that's the usual scenario in the mix zone. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, all right. Look, today we're going to talk about why the ISL. Let's start with that question. Why is it a good idea for swimming? Why is it needed? ISL is, it, ISL is really long overdue. Um, it's, it, it's something swimming has needed years and years ago. Um, we've just had not, not had anybody that had been willing to, to fight through the battles that's needed to, to get something like this up and running, somebody that could really bankroll this um, and take all the risks and stuff something everything is in place the athletes are there they are superstars but they are they are not being they don't have the opportunities to to um, oh gosh just capitalize on on yeah, what every other system. sports have every other sports already have it and right. for me I, I could never figure out why could other sports draw the crowds, I mean obscure sports draw crowds and stuff, when we have the most beautiful sport in the world, yeah. a be most beautiful athletes, it's such a beauty to watch, everything about it is just gorgeous, why, why do we not have a professional league, so, so yeah. why not? Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the bank rolling there. We're talking about Konstantin Grigorishin and uh, his funding of the ISL and so on. It does actually, in lots of those other sports down the years, it has taken that, hasn't it? It has taken a, someone with vision and someone with money to test the system and, uh, and so on. And that's what swimming is. That, that's exactly what's happening in swimming Absolutely. Now. I think yeah. it definitely took somebody that had the vision and then they had the capability to see it through. Yeah. But, but beyond the vision to the, the guts to, to see this through from beginning to end, you know, it's, it's not an easy task. It's no, a lot, right. of, lot of things, a lot of politics, yeah. just a lot of moving parts that had to get together, um, yeah. fall into place. And, and you know what? Um, for me, I just want to get a message out to the community right there. Guys, don't, don't wait and s wait for this, cheer for it to fail or wait to see. Right. Believe in it. Get behind it um, that's yeah. that is what's also going to give this whole yeah. thing wings underneath yeah. or air underneath their wings honestly uh, one of the kind of things that that um, has come across is that some people seem to think that this is I don't know it's kind of anti the Olympic Games now of course you're a double Olympic champion uh, you, you know you've had a great Olympic career in your time and so on it's, that's not the case, is it? We're not talking about something that's anti-Olympic. We're talking about filling the gap and the void in between. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, filling the void is a, is a, a well description of what is, this is all about. Um, uh, you know, currently exposure for our athletes is once every four years. Uh, they deserve better exposure. They deserve more prominent, more consistent exposure around, you know, year round. Yeah. And ISL is a perfect uh, fill-in for that, and an also perfect opportunity to really showcase our athletes and allow them to to have a greater, more consistent exposure, which Olympics really doesn't do, right? Olympics does it for for every four years, for two weeks, and then maybe a little bit afterwards if you're yeah. successful, but not consistently over time. And and if you look at it, you compare compare. Uh, swimming to other sports and other big uh, professional leagues that have that are successful, they're driven by consistency uh, being in front of people. And you can get, I mean, uh, uh, technically, you can get, uh, not technically, in fact, we do have lots and lots of people in the world who have silver and bronze medals at Olympics, great Olympic careers, and they're unknown. They're completely unknown and got nothing out of it. I mean, they got what they got out of it. I don't mean yeah. that. I mean, financially, they got nothing. In fact, they right. got a big bill for their parents. Yeah, not even uh, unknown. No. Just, just they cannot make a living. Exactly. Right. That was one of the biggest surprises that I, you know, as Michael was growing up in the sport as an elite athlete, is coming to the realization how these athletes struggle to make a living. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I am 
so passionate about and so excited about the ISL that it is going to be able, it's going to provide athletes to be able to, to follow their dreams and to, to make a living, to support their families off of this. Yeah. And, and then their dream, you know, athletes that are coming into the sport knows that they have something to look forward to, you know, yeah. and they don't, we don't have to con have the conversation even in our homes. Should I rather play basketball or play yeah. football, you know, yeah. swimming, I, I can have, this can actually be a true profession. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, so get to the fun bit. Um, you've all created your own logos, your own team names and so on. Can you just talk me through why you chose it and, and, and what did you choose? <laughs> so I'm the general manager of LA Current. Uh, here's my logo right here. <laughs> uh, again, well, first of all, I'm based in LA, so LA was kind of a natural for me. Uh, in terms of the logo and the concept itself, obviously, we wanted to have some swimming feel to it. And obviously, having a diver going across uh, the name of our uh, team is something that, uh, you know, I was pretty excited and I was uh, quite involved in, in developing the look of it. Are you also developing side profile the, uh, is not very good. And the chants, are you, are, are you getting ready to sort of have a, a team chant or something? Well, we're looking to create some of that. Uh, we have a lot of other more, more, uh, pressing. more pressing needs right now uh, from an organizational standpoint. Obviously, this is a startup, so there's a lot of things that we need to be doing as general yeah. managers um, to focus on. But, you know, also as part of the experience from previous uh, Olymp being on the Olympic teams, our, our athletes are the ones that are so great in creating that camaraderie yeah. and that, those cheers and come up with those right. old. So I will look to them to come up with that. Great. You did that in your day. Yeah, yes. you came up with your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um He's got my mic. Sorry. Um, so uh, it's the same question, really. What's your logo? Why did you choose it? Okay. So we are New York Breakers, and we have yeah. a rhino breaking through a shield. And right. it it didn't start out as that. Okay. You know, first we picked New York because we yeah. believe New York. I honestly believe that we ended up with the best market, the greatest commercialized. You know, the market that we can yeah. commercialize the sport, and. Um, the rhino, how yeah, that yeah. came about was, I was really, in the early designs, I had something completely different designed. Um, I thought it was very unique and, and smashing, but it was, it was completely canned. And <laughs> <laughs> I was given, the first time I saw the image of the rhino, I just about nearly cried. Right. But I... I grew to love it because it, I, I, you yeah. know what, um, my daughter actually saved the day for me because um, right. she said, Mom, just, just Google the, the characteristics of a rhinoceros and I immediately, immediately connected with it, right. you know, on an emotional level. Yeah. It was, it's indigenous to South Africa, which our family, Peter yeah. and Michael, and that's where we're yeah. from. Yeah. But beyond that, it's a tough animal right. and it's breaking barriers and that's yeah. what we're doing with ISL. That's what we're doing. We're planning on doing, you know, as we beat all the other teams teams out <laughs> and Break. it's fearless yeah. and, yeah. and we <laughs> actually intimidated <laughs> not at all but that's okay <laughs> he looks so calm and collected <laughs> well i always look calm you and are <laughs> Okay, so look, uh, we we don't know all the details. We don't know all the details of the of the of the what the pool's going to look like and so on. But we've had some sort of little tips and so on about the colours. You're going to be swimming in uh, specific lanes, so you might have lanes one and two, three and four, and whatever. How will that help? And are you excited by the by the light presentation? Do you know? Can you tell us anything um, about what we can look forward to? What I what I can tell you, it's going to be unlike anything you have ever seen in your life, honestly. And I and I don't say that lightly. Um, no expenses are spared to to put up the greatest show, um, not just the greatest show, to create the greatest atmosphere for the athletes and for the fans. Um, so with you know we have hired and engaged the best of the best to um, put the event together. Uh, the broadcasters that we have that we've got coming into the sport and the things that we are still wrapping up for the US market it's it's going to be a show to note it's right. unbelievable right. we got a glimpse of it in Rome in 2017 they put the light show on and so on. I don't know if you were there you were in no Rome. Rome. you didn't no, go to that no there. and they had that test and so on. it looked really great um, and that was a long course environment much more difficult than a short course yeah. environment and so on so uh, have you got any anything to tell us that we didn't know 
uh, no, I think Tina kind of summed, summed it up. Uh, but I will tell you that it would be it will be on the next level compared to what you reference uh, from with a Rome event. It will be right. a completely next level, yeah. and I think we're all incredibly excited about it. There's also a level of surprise even for us as general managers in terms of how great this is going to be. Um, ultimately, we want to make sure that there is an incredible experience for our athletes. Um, that they they will be part of something they've never participated before and of course for the fans yeah. uh, and of course for the fans that are currently not to get new fans into the sport yeah. because that is the key for this league is going to be not just the swimming right. community around the world but how do we bring in a, someone that doesn't follow the sport today that right. will follow it tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Now, look, a part of this is tactical. You're going to have to sort of, uh, is it going to be a little bit like the NCAA that you're friends for the hour before and you're friends for the hour after, but during the two hours, you're going to be kind of mortal enemies. <laughs> and you're gonna, but, but are there tactics involved? There are key, key tactics. Yeah? Yeah. What are the things you're going to have to watch um, what the other team are doing in terms of the strengths and weaknesses of, of, of knowing you won't know until they line up? How, how, how long before a race will you know what Tina's or coaches have put, put, in, put in on the deck, yeah, on the blocks? There, there you know, will be a ton of strategy involved. I mean, right. just the way the whole meet is going to be structured and the way the points are um, yeah. allocated and stuff, you know, a lot of our strategy at least will go into that. You know, uh, for, we will be able to change our lineups um, right. during Twice. during the event, and so you know, depending on on who maybe the other team is fielding, if you need to put a better matchup yeah. or whatever, you you can yeah. do that. We have the freedom to do that. But yeah, for me, I think the the biggest thing is who shows up on the day to race. Right. You know, and yeah. and having depth and and we we do certainly have a strategy to win. It's it's everybody thinks that you have to have all the gold medalists and getting you know it's there's yeah. a lot more to and I know I don't come from an NCAA background or a team scenario we have yeah. we have money or not money we have numbers people <laughs> engaged right. to help yeah. us because yeah. because it is really yeah. it's about statistics about numbers and knowing yeah. where our athletes can step up and and count um, we will hustle for every single point great good stuff um, in terms of the, there's a slow swim um, penalty, you know, so you, you kids, you're going to make your kids aware of that, and do you think it's a good idea? Because we do go to events sometimes where, you know, fourth in something called a world event is extremely slow. It's slower than Shane Gould was in 1972 recently, uh, and so on. So, so that, that's kind of disastrous for swimming, really. Um, so it's a good idea, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, although I don't, although we will communicate it to our athletes, I really don't believe that's going to be an issue at all. Um, I think everyone's, everyone's in it uh, to understand that this is a team concept, so every point counts. Um, there, there's also a benefit for each individual athlete on the team based on the success of yeah. overall teams. So there's a lot of things that are at play. I think from our standpoint, I will rely a lot on our coaching staff to be right. able to manage the meets and the lineups. I'm fortunate enough to have coaching uh, staff that has great college experience and has that dual meet experience, which is incredibly important yeah. in this format. Yeah. So we will rely a lot on that. But I really uh, over all don't see too many penalties of athletes yeah going yeah, below the standards uh, right. especially the now standards are very, yeah, the standards are very light now. it's just yeah. more so yeah. for optics you know we don't yeah. want absolutely yeah. absolutely and then the, the other thing is being right uh, this year going into an Olympic year also I think everyone's just stepping up in terms yeah. of their their mindset and their right. training as well as racing preparation right. because it's all leading up to next year as well can I ask a quick question about uh, merchandising? Now, this is going to, you know, athletes are going to be able to sort of up their own market value, um, and you, you as teams, will be able to uh, get your merchandising ready. You've all got your shirts ready and stuff like that. What other kind of merchandising opportunities are there? Well, we're, we're looking. I think a lot of it it depends on each individual club and some of the opportunities we're looking. We're we're looking to partner up with some some other brands that we right. can see really um, to create an exposure for our athletes 
and to be able to see how that will be communicated through through broadcasting. So there's still a lot of that in development at, yeah. at the moment, but obviously merchandising will be one of the yeah. key components. We've been fortunate enough to have some flexibility as a club of what yeah. we can do, individual clubs, with some guidelines from ISL Global in terms yeah. of yeah. what their expectations are. And we'll, we'll be looking to... to to create, to bring on, bring in our own creative creativity a little yeah. bit. Fantastic. What what New York Breakers have? Can yeah. I answer that question too? Yeah, Is that okay? Absolutely. So yeah. what we have done for our team and what we're busy working on, we don't have it quite rolled out yet, is we are actually going to create a store for each of our athletes. So each athlete will have a personalized line of merchandise and nice. then they are actually going to benefit from it personally, I will give them 50% of the proceeds that come from the merchandising that's selling with their name, branding and their likeness on it. And you know what, it will it will engage them too to help promote it, to, to get active and, and you know, being professional about the careers. So very excited about that. So from the world of football, meaning soccer, you know, uh, if, you, if you look at, um, you know, kids love buying shirts with the names of the heroes exactly. on the back and so on. Is that something we're going to see? We have it. I, I didn't wear that shirt this morning, but we already have it. Um, we have a name and, and the number. We actually have each athlete had chosen a special number to them, and we'll market it as that. So each of the athletes in my team have a number. And we're also coming out with baseball cards. I know DC Trident has already announced theirs too. I think um, it will be great if all of the teams have it. That will up the value of the trading cards. But I think um, it will be a really cool collectible, you know, for for just another really cool way. There's something else we're working on that's really special um, for for the Christmas market, and I will not reveal that. But now. you're not going to reveal it, okay? <laughs> Santa in the suit, no, it's yes. well. okay. Um, so look, uh, just to kind of wrap up, I. I w wanted to ask what do you think where this is going if we were looking like 10 years you're like I don't know 20 not quite 20 years beyond your your, your peak form and so on, but but you're you know 10 years time where will we be if this if this goes where you think it could go where do you think swimming would be well I, I really believe that if if things align and go the way we we hope they will this uh considering how popular of a sport it is during the olympic games i really believe we can be one of the most prominent professional leagues um, around the world we're really uh, if i'm not mistaken the only professional league right now that it will encompass a different continent i don't i might be wrong but i, I, th I think you're right a global we're a global, a global league. exactly yeah. and i think that is such a unique aspect of this our growth is really unlimited it's just a matter of uh yeah. you know starting the right way being a little bit patient yeah. but and then and the, the day, equality as well with women in sport everything yeah. from from a yeah. grassroots level yeah. we have that equality I, I could ask you about that because I just asked about the shirt just as one last question. You can look backwards, can't you, for what you just mentioned about the shirts. I found that fascinating. What, what one big thing in swimming, swimming never was never a sport that took the, the stars of the past, the great names of the past, and did anything with them. Right. It never did anything with them. It let them go. Yeah. Right. So what about the Shane Gould t-shirt? You know, what about the, exactly. you know, whatever. Is exactly. that possible? I, I believe so. You know, often every time I travel and I go go past these stores with the merchandising for those favorite teams for those cities, I envision that to be, you know, New York breakers will have stores and airports where people travel. That's where I see the future of this goes because this sport will grow to that. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's, that's a really optimistic and wonderful note to end on. Yeah. Uh, this is Craig Lord for Swimming World TV. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you. Sorry. Chucking up there. <laughs> that's really good. That was terrific. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. I waffled yeah. a little bit in the beginning. No, 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 no,